Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for the Alert Origination Software Providers recorded demonstration series. This is hosted by the Integrated Public Alert and Warning Systems Technical Support Service Facility, otherwise briefly known as IPOS TSSF. Today we have the Director of Customer Support, Nick Phillips, with BCG, who will be showing us how to send an IPAWS alert with Disasterland. Before we, get, we begin, I need to share a disclaimer. The integrated public alert and warning system vendor demonstrations are intended to increase state and local emergency management agencies' awareness of vendor products and IPAWS capabilities. The webinar provides an overview of the interoperability of these systems with iPods open and will include vendor presentations of their products. FEMA's iPods Program Management Office encourages and facilitates this discussion of products and tools, but it does not endorse any specific vendor's products. This webinar is for educational purposes only. And now I'll go ahead and present Nick Phillips. You have the presenter right now. Thank you, Sandra. And thank you to everyone at, on the IPOS team for uh, allowing us to provide this overview and presentation. So I'm gonna be logging into our IPOS uh, test lab environment today. Um, so this system is accessed through a secure username and password. So I'm going to uh, enter in the URL for my system, and then I'll go ahead and enter my username and password in the fields here, and we'll start the login process. So from here, I'm just going to make sure that we are entering into our test lab incident, and I'll go ahead and click continue. And that'll complete the login process. So from here, we can see we're brought directly into our IPOS test lab environment. Um, we have a couple I pause messages showing up in, in our inbox area here, um, but I I want to start off by showing the process for entering in I pause certificates. So there's a separate administrative component aside from um, our sort of test lab environment that you're seeing on the screen here, where you can you know actually send those messages out, um, whether you're sending to a, a test certificate or a live certificate. Um, but to sort of set this environment up, um, that's done through our uh, administration portal um, for our IPOS module. So I'm gonna go in the menu here at the top, we're gonna go to admin, and then we'll go to our communication center module. From here, I'm gonna click IPOS interface. This is our administrative page for um, managing uh, all of the uh, IPOS certificates uh, entered into uh, a system here. So we have the ability to support both uh, live and, and demo certificates, uh, and both of those certificates are, are managed from this page. Many of our clients will uh, set up uh, two, two systems. One is a test site. We'll, where they will load their, um, their test cog. And one is a, a live or production system where they will load um, their production certificate. And that allows uh, uh, different uh, groups of, of individuals to be able to access the, the test system and the test certificate. And then you know, only uh, trained and embedded individuals um, are able to send um, through their live certificate, and that those two systems are, are accessed through uh, different different credentials. So when we click the add button here to add a new uh, certificate here, uh, we have this uh, add new cog uh, interface um, that allows the the simple importation of uh, IPOS cogs. So as we upload a certificate file into this certificate file section. The system's gonna automatically run uh, the git prog. Uh, the system's gonna automatically run the git cog profile method uh, and obtain the permissions uh, for that certificate that's being uploaded. There's a couple different fields in here uh, to give uh, your, your certificate that you're uploading a name. Uh, you can enter in the cog ID uh, the password for that file, 
and then you have a cap endpoint field where you're able to choose uh, either test or live certificate. Also on this certificate setup page, you have a couple pieces of, of information that are clearly displayed. So we have our, our cap endpoint, whether this is a, a, a live or a test certificate. Um, we have the ability to set a default certificate. So most of the time, uh, the default certificate is going to be the, the test certificate as it's going to be used the most. And then we can also clearly see the expiration time for their certificate um, right from this interface. An additional capability that the system provides is the ability to template out IPOS messages. And from there we may and we can manage those templates from the communication center uh, templates interface. So on the left hand side menu, I'm going to click communication center templates. And from here, we can see the different iPods templates that we have pre-built here. So just as an example here, here is our uh, EAS proficiency test template. The ability to, to template your proficiency tests out just provides a, a level of, of ease and flexibility uh, for, for those monthly tests. So we can open this up. And um, this just gives the system the ability to um, pre-populate the fields to really the greatest extent possible. Um, you could pre-populate these templates uh, and then from the uh, test lab environment, you can load those templates and I'll show you how to do that next. So from here, I'm gonna click our home button and this will just get us back into our test lab. So the next part of the demonstration, I'm going to show how we can send um, either from a template or you know just a brand new iPods message um, to the test lab environment. So from my iPods inbox here, I'm gonna click this add button. This will load up a new message. So to enable our to enable the ability to uh, send to iPods, we first have to select uh, a recipient. So you click either the two box or the area next to the two box. This will open up our address book. From here, we're going to select yes for this external alert message setting. Once we do that, our iPods channels uh, appear under the distribution channel section of the address book. From here, each channel is clearly labeled, and the system automatically runs a connectivity test um, once we uh, enable that external alert message setting. So you can see here our, our default certificate um, distribution channels are shown at the top here, and each one is, is clearly labeled as uh, a test lab, both in the name here and then at the end in parentheses. And then we can see that we can alert over WIA, EAS, and W and NWEM. So from here, I'm gonna make my selections. The system allows you to alert over multiple distribution channels simultaneously. So I can select multiple channels, click the save button. And from here, I can start filling out my cap. I'll enter a subject and a message, and then I'll work through the various cat fields here. Notice that each field has a red asterisk next to it that denotes uh, whether or not that field is required uh, as part of the cap. So there's validation uh, built into this, where if I were to, for example, uh, click the send button without filling out one of those required fields, I get a validation message with an explanation of what I need to do to resolve that message. Uh, each field that I fill out, if I confirm here, each field that, I, that I'm required to fill out as part of the cap is highlighted in red. Also notice at the top of the cap that the uh, 
endpoint that we are sending to is clearly displayed in large red lettering. So from here, I'm going to continue on selecting a category, a response type, and an event code. Entering in a description, selecting a duration for this message. And that brings me to the uh, map where I can define an alerting area. We support a number of different methods for defining an alerting area, and those are easily accessible from this uh, mini map area uh, within the cap. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to draw a shape around our alerting area. I can double click to, to finish that. And also note that we do support uh, multiple alerting areas. I'm going to enter in a description. We'll call this alerting area. And then we can add our FIPS code. After I make my selections there, I'm going to move on to the urgency, severity, and certainty fields. Using the drop down, I can simply select our urgency, our severity, and our certainty. From here, I have the ability to enter in a WIA short text and a WIA long text. And these messages can be entered in either English or Spanish. I'll enter in my short text, my long text. Next, I'll select a WIA handling code. Go with public safety here for this test. And then we can select a time zone. Go with Eastern. One additional ability uh, that's supported through uh, Disasterland is the ability to upload uh, recordings. That can be done down at the bottom in this attachment section. I can click the upload button, select my recording, and that recording will, will then be become part of, of that cap. Once I'm, once, I'm, once I'm finished filling out the required fields, I can go ahead and click the send button. That'll submit our message to the IPOS test lab environment. The IPOS alerting sound will be played and that message will scroll across the top of the screen. So once I submit that message to the IPOS test lab, and there we go, here's our message. Yep, we can clearly see your EAS message now in the lab, scrolling across the TV. Awesome, that's fantastic. So just to wrap things up, uh, a couple additional things happen once I submit a test message to the um, IPOS uh, test lab. So note that I can see my message here from my iPause inbox. I can preview my message. I can view its history. I can see the alerting area that I have defined. And then I can review the contents of that cap right from this test lab interface. Additionally, if I needed to update or cancel my alert, I can do that from the sent iPause messages mailbox. On the left hand side, I can click sent iPause messages. And then I can see here if I click my most recent submission. From this message preview area down at the bottom of the screen, notice I have the ability to either update or cancel um, this message. In addition to that, if I were to go into my uh, internal mailbox, you can see that when I submit that cap to the IPAWS test environment, I get a delivery summary message that details the status of that message. So you can see for this example, um, we passed all of the status checks for, for cap 
NWEM, EAS, CMAS, and public. Additionally, we have the ability to directly link to the test lab environment. So in the menu here, if I go under links and I go to my iPause message viewer, I can clearly see my civil danger warning here. I can click on that message identifier. I'm able to see the civil danger warning description, the headline, the sender, the sent date, and then a status for each of the channels. So notice that we have green checks for EAS, NWEM, and WIA. We can also review our WIA text, and if there's any attachments, those will be displayed here as well. That being said, I'd just like to um, thank the IPAWS support team uh, for allowing me to give this presentation. And I hope I was able to uh, give you an informative overview of uh, some of the features and capabilities um, of our IPAWS module within our disaster land emergency management system. So thank you again, and I'll pass it back to Nassandra. Thank you so much, Nick. I appreciate that. And I'm going to end the recording now.